Hello YouTube, Sintron Productions here, and for this video, I am going to review this. What is this thing, you may ask? Well, it's simple. It's just one of those cheap food mats you can easily get at Walmart. Ugh. Yeah, like Sheldon said, it's one of those cheap plastic food mats you can easily get at Walmart. I've had this thing ever since I was a kid, because I saw it and I was like, hey, I want to buy this, I want to eat food on it, because it looks cool. Hmm, when was it made? I think it says it. Hmm, so according to the back, it was made by some Greenbrier Centex in 2004? Well, this thing sure is old. Not as old as the dinosaurs, of course, but still pretty old. Mm. So for today's video, I'm gonna review this thing, and I'm gonna point out everything that's wrong with it. Why? Well, why not? Look, I have nothing else to do right now, so let's get started. As you can see, this food mat is pretty big, because it's almost as long as Rexy here. I do not look like that at all! <laughs> I'm out of here! I have better things to do, like, ooh, that! <laughs> Okay, now let's get started officially. Okay, now the front of this mat has a bunch of dinosaurs in a grassy green area with a volcano in the background. While the back has a bunch of cool facts, or they're supposed to be cool, but uh, we'll get into that. Let's start by viewing the front of this food mat. Okay, so like I said, it's a grassy green area and wait a minute, grass? GRASS? Wow, we already found something very wrong in this picture. There was no grassy plains during the prehistoric era. Sorry, I flubbed my line there. I was gonna say during the Mesozoic era, but I accidentally said prehistoric era. Of course, grass appeared later during the time of, you know, Smilodons and uh, giant sloths and all that, but, but, but I'm talking about the dinosaur age. There was no grassy plains or any of that. Now, according to one of the pages in this dinosaur book by Dr. Thomas R. Holtz, this is a very good book, by the way, not gonna lie. The book says that while grass is known from a few traces in the late Cretaceous, but they did not yet form big prairies or savannas. So despite some pictures you might see, no Tyrannosaurid ever hunted a Ceratopsian through the tall grass. Technically, grass did first appear during the late Cretaceous, but it was not, you know, like this. Uh, there shouldn't be any huge grassy plains or savannas. The savannas and prairies should have been covered in ferns and other types of plants that were common during that time. Not grass. But enough talk about grass. We're here for the dinosaurs. So yeah, there's a bunch of dinosaurs uh, chilling in front of a volcano that's smoking. Because of course, what kind of cheap, cliched, prehistoric drawing is, is complete without a volcano? <sighs> There weren't volcanoes absolutely all over the place during the Mesozoic. What is it with these artists' obsession with volcanoes? Thankfully, lots of modern paleo art does not have volcanoes all over the place. So anyway, there are six dinosaurs here. Or wait, should I say there's only four dinosaurs? Triceratops, Apatosaurus, Tyrannosaurus rex, and Stegosaurus. This thing is not a dinosaur, it's a pterosaur, a winged reptile from the Mesozoic era. Pterosaurs lived with the dinosaurs, but they were not dinosaurs. Not every animal in the Mesozoic era was a dinosaur. <coughs> there were also pterosaurs, <coughs> marine reptiles, <coughs> crocodiles, <coughs> birds, small mammals, the Mesozoic didn't just have dinosaurs, there were all kinds of creatures. But, at least pterosaurs did live during that time, so I can let it slide being here. But, what didn't live during that time, was this guy over here! <laughs> this is Dimetrodon! Dimetrodon was not a dinosaur! In fact, it did not even live during the time of the dinosaurs! It lived way before the dinosaurs even existed! Look! Even the facts at the back say that it lived during the Permian period, 280 million years ago! This guy lived long before the dinosaurs, so why is he in this picture? Oh, so like I said, Dimetrodon was not a dinosaur. In fact, it's not even a reptile! 
It's a type of animal called a synapsid. Synapsids looked like reptiles, but they were more closely related to mammals. So, Dimetrodon is pretty much uh, related to humans, kinda, distantly, uh, whatever. Also, this Dimetrodon kinda looks like Barney, but uh, for, uh, whatever. So anyway, those are all the animals. I'm gonna say animals, cause not all of them are dinosaurs, but anyway. Those are all the animals that are in this mat. Now, is that everything wrong? The fact that there's grass and, and a Dimetrodon in this picture? Well, no, there's more wrong things. First of all, why do these dinosaurs have ridiculous colors? I mean, okay, green is fine, but it's a little too bright green. Like, but, but, but why is the T-Rex orange? <laughs> Oh, come on. A yellow Stegosaurus. I mean, okay, there's lots of yellow and orangish animals out there, but come on. This bright yellow with no other color. What, what is this, a Lemonsaurus? Now, don't get me wrong. Dinosaurs were most likely pretty colorful because uh, lots of birds and reptiles today are pretty colorful. <coughs> but a completely yellow Stego is absolutely ridiculous. Oh, but the, the weird... Uh, Weird, weird, weird colors are not the only thing wrong here. Yeah. Since this is a very old mat, of course, uh, the dinosaurs look a little, um, outdated by today's standards. Really outdated. Let's start with the queen herself, Tyrannosaurus Rex. Yeah, I think the head is too small. I mean, come on. T-Rex was supposed to have a big head. Why is it so tiny? Uh, at least the legs look fine, and uh, at least its pose is fine, I guess. Two-legged dinosaurs did not stand so upright and with their tail on the ground like a kangaroo. They had a more straighter pose and with the tail completely off the ground. This T-Rex's tail is, well, it's kinda near the ground, but it's not touching it. But it, it it's certainly not dragging it, so that's fine. But, oh no! This Apatosaurus is dragging its tail on the ground. Dinosaurs did not drag their tail along the ground like a giant iguana. They held their tail above the ground. This Apatosaurus basically has a broken tail. Seriously, dinosaurs did not drag their tails. That was disproven like hundreds of years ago. Also, another thing wrong with this Apatosaurus. Uh, its neck is being held too high up and its neck is very thin. Apatosaurus kept its neck in a more straight position, and the neck was a lot bulkier and more filled with muscle. It's Diplodocus who had a relatively thinner neck than Apatosaurus. Other larger kinds of sauropods like Argentinosaurus and Brachiosaurus here did hold their necks up relatively high, but Apatosaurus and its relatives were supposed to hold them in a more horizontal uh, pose. Look, the Apatosaurus that's on the back of the mat it looks a bit more accurate than the one on the front. It is holding its neck a little bit high, but, uh, uh, but it looks a, little, a bit more close to the ground. Apatosaurus could stretch their neck up high sometimes, but usually they hold them closer to the ground. Well, at least the feet look fine. Uh, I can't see the claws, but it's because we're seeing the back of the feet. The Apatosaurus that's on the back actually does have pretty accurate looking feet because it has three claws on the back feet and only one claw on the front feet. This foot claw configuration is true in all sauropods. Or maybe most of them, I'm not sure. So here we have spiky Amargosaurus, club-tailed Shunosaurus, and long-necked Diplodocus. They all look different, but they all have the same type of feet. Only one claw on the front feet and three claws on the back feet. The Apatosaurus on the back of the mat has this correct feet, so good job. What isn't correct is this! What is this? Are they living in a swamp? Sauropods did not live in swamps. That was disproven since like, what, the 90s or a little earlier than that? I don't know. But they did not live in swamps. Okay, maybe you could argue that they're just taking a dip, but, uh, but, but, uh, I don't know, whatever. Sauropods were land animals. They did not live in the swamp. The only reason people used to think that they lived in swamps was because they were too heavy to support their weight on land, but that's not true. Sure, they were super heavy, but they also had some sort of air sacs inside that helped reduce weight. 
Also, their mighty pillar-like legs helped support all their weight easily. So sauropods in the swamp is dumb. Although maybe I'm just being a little harsh. Maybe they are just taking a, sw a brief swim and then they're gonna get out, but uh, I, don't, I don't know. Okay, so we reviewed the long necks in this picture, now on to Stego. It looks fine, I guess. Uh, oh no, the spikes. Uh, this is a classic problem. In most pictures or toys of Stegosaurus, the, the spikes, called thagomizers, are pointing upwards. But that's not how they were in real life. In real life, the thagomizer spikes pointed to the sides, not upwards. That way they could stab predators, which was the intended purpose. Oh, but the position of the spikes and the fact that he's dragging his tail are not the only things wrong with this stego. Is he smiling? Uh, wait, he has teeth. Uh, he has a beak full of teeth. Stegosaurs were supposed to have toothless beaks. They did have teeth, but not in the beak. They had the teeth in the cheeks. Look, they got it right with the Triceratops. It does not have teeth in its beak. The teeth are supposed to be inside the cheeks. So why does this stego have a toothy smile? Also, he looks kind of evil. He looks like he's plotting something sinister. Just look at his face. He's like, oh, I'm gonna take over the world. <laughs> okay, so, so far, the T-Rex is fine-ish, I guess. Uh, the Stego is awful. The Apatosaurus is very outdated. Uh, this Dimetrodon shouldn't even be here. But now, let's move on to the Tricera. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Did I even do their bloody research? That is not a Triceratops! This is a Triceratops! Triceratops is supposed to have a round, bony frill. But this guy has a tall, square-shaped frill, and his horns are pretty short. Triceratops had very long horns. And also, if you look closely, that frill has holes that are covered in skin. This is not a Triceratops! It looks more like a Pentaceratops! Or maybe a Chasmosaurus. <laughs> What's really stupid is that, on the back, the animal shown looks a lot more like a Triceratops. You see? Bony, round frill, very long brow horns. A Triceratops had a frill of solid bone. It did not have holes covered in skin, like other Ceratopsians. This is clearly a Pentaceratops. Seriously, how hard is it to get dinosaur names right, or make them look like what they're supposed to look like? Speaking of wrong names... Let's head over to our token pterosaur. It's simply called a pterodactyl. Uh, let me explain something. People y usually refer to all pterosaurs as pterodactyls, even if they're not exactly called pterodactyls. But, like, there's lots of different pterosaurs. There was one pterosaur called pterodactylus, but people usually call all pterosaurs pterodactyls, but that's wrong. They had different names. This pterosaur is clearly a Rampharynchus. <coughs> Rampharynchus is a type of small, long-tailed pterosaur from the Jurassic period of Germany. <coughs> Why is it called a pterodactyl? It's clearly a Rampharynchus. Look, the same head, the same tail. Uh, come on. Do your research, people. I don't care if this mat was made in 2004. This food mat is supposed to educate children about prehistoric creatures. So, Use the real names of said prehistoric creatures. Don't just call it a pterodactyl instead of what it specifically is, which is Rampharynchus. This pterosaur was called pterodactylus, but not all pterosaurs were called pterodactyls. This is pterodactylus. This is Rampharynchus. This is Pteranodon. This is Dimorphodon. This is Pterodostro. This is Tapijara. This is Nemecolopterus. This is Nyctosaurus. This is Alanqua. This is Quetzalcoatlus. And this is Aramburgiania. Uh, oh, whatever. Aramburgiania. You can't just refer to every pterosaur as a pterodactyl. How hard was it to just call it Rampharynchus? What? They didn't know how to spell it? Rampharynchus isn't even that hard to pronounce or write. I mean, try saying Aramburgiania very fast. Also, this pterosaur looks a bit naked. Pterosaurs were not scaly, they were covered in fuzz. Also, this other Rampharynchus that's in the background looks very poorly drawn compared to this one. It looks like a dragon or something. Very poorly drawn dragon. Well, that was the front of this mat. And it's... 
fine, I guess, but uh, they could have done these dinosaurs better. Okay, fine. I was a bit too harsh. I know uh, this was made in 2004, and, uh, well, pe people were still understanding dinosaurs. Oh, who am I kidding? People already understand it, dinosaurs. Uh, whatever. Dinosaurs did not drag their tails on the ground like an iguana. Stegosaurs and other dinosaurs with beaks did not have teeth in their beak. Sauropods did not live in the swamps. Dimetrodon was already extinct when the first dinosaurs appeared. That is not a Triceratops! And not every pterosaur is called Pterodactyl. This is a Rampharynchus. Of course, they didn't butcher the king of the dinosaurs that much besides giving it a small, comically tiny head and broken hands as usual. Due to how popular Jurassic Park is, theropod dinosaurs are always drawn with their hands uh, pointing downward like that, like zombie hands. But in real life, the hands of theropods, such as this Spinosaurus here, are supposed to point at each other. Their hands weren't bent downward like a zombie's hands. So basically, if a T-Rex were to make its hands point like this, they're broken. They're totally broken. So that was the front. Well, now let's move to the back. As you can see, the back has facts about all these dinosaurs and pterosaurs and misplaced synapsids. It has facts in English and in Spanish. Since I'm bilingual, I can understand both languages, but I'm just gonna read them in English. For convenience, because I know lots of people that are probably watching this video do not know how to speak Spanish. Probably. Plus, I don't want to make this video super long, so I'm just gonna read them in English to save time. So here goes, the first one, pterodactyl, quote-unquote. Seriously, this is a Rampharynchus, remember that, children. Anyway. Pterodactyl, meaning winged finger. Yeah, that's what pterodactyl and pterodactylus means. However, Rampharynchus means beak snout. Remember that. It was a pterosaur with a wingspan of three feet living during the Cretaceous. Wait, what? What? No, 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 no. Okay, maybe Pteranodon and Quetzalcoatlus and many other pterosaurs lived during the Cretaceous, but, but Rampharynchus and pterodactylus lived during the Jurassic period, before the Cretaceous. Seriously, these long-tailed pterosaurs were already extinct during the Cretaceous. Ugh. At least it gets the Germany part right, because Rampharynchus and Pterodactylus both lived in Germany. Well, what is now Germany, I mean. Uh, it, was, it was a carnivore, or flesh eater, and fish was probably the mainstay of its diet. Uh, I guess, I mean, I, I think Rampharynchus did eat fish, but maybe also insects, uh, whatever, those teeth are handy for snapping up small prey. It could fly long distances using its lightweight wings, uh, probably. Pterodactyl fossils have been found in France, England, Germany, and Tanzania, or Tanzania, whatever. Yeah, but it gets those parts right, I guess. Fun fact. Rampharynchus and Pterodactylus lived in the same places in the same time period, so they would regularly see each other a lot. So I guess that's why they confused Rampharynchus with Pterodactylus, because they both lived in the same place. But, uh, uh, but they should have done better research. They can't just call every pterosaur a pterodactyl. So now let's read about Triceratops. Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, this Triceratops pictured here actually looks like a real Triceratops, well, more or less. I mean, wait, its tail is dragging on the ground. Why? They held their tail above the ground. This tail is broken. But uh, at least the rest looks fine. I mean, uh, he looks very depressed. Like, he's seen better days. But yeah, his head is recognizable as a Triceratops head. That's the shape of the frill, more or less. At least it's not a Pentaceratops trying to cosplay as a Triceratops. But it says here that anyway, Triceratops, which means three-horned face, was about 30 feet long, 10 feet tall, and weighed 6 to 12 tons. It lived during the late Cretaceous period, uh, 72 million to 65 million years ago. So it was one of the last dinosaurs. It was an herbivore, or plant eater, walking on four short legs, and it was relatively slow. Fossils have been found in western Canada and western United States. Did it live in Canada? I know they lived in Hell Creek, uh, but Canada? I uh, maybe. Uh, I'm not sure. I need to check this later, but whatever. Seriously, he looks very depressed. He looks like Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh. Uh, I've seen better days. Pathetic. Now, here's the facts about Tyrannosaurus Rex, the tyrant lizard king itself. And wait a minute. 
Okay, I'm gonna admit it. This T-Rex looks a lot more like a Velociraptor than a T-Rex. Why is it so thin? Look, look, you can see its ribs. This thing hasn't eaten in months, poor thing. Why is it so emaciated? It has the same broken zombie hands. Uh, at least the legs look uh, proportionate. But the head is very tiny. Why do they keep drawing T-Rexes with tiny heads? Also, this tail is broken. They did not drag along the ground, but they certainly didn't bend like that upwards either. Theropod dinosaurs had stiff, muscular tails that didn't bend, and that way they could keep their balance. Seriously, this tail is broken, and the poor thing is shrink-wrapped and emaciated. You should not easily see its bones. These, these were living animals that had lots of muscle and uh, whatever. So, Tyrannosaurus rex, meaning Tyrant Lizard King, was a huge meat eater, or carnivore, with large teeth and strong jaw muscles. The str one of the strongest in the animal world, in fact. It lived during the Cretaceous period. Walking on two powerful legs, T-Rex was 40 feet long, 15 to 20 feet tall, and weighed 5 to 7 tons. Its arms were only 3 feet long. It lived in forests, and its fossils have been found in North America and... Mongolia. Hold up. Hold up! Yeah, that information is a little outdated right now. Tyrannosaurus rex only lived in North America, not Mongolia. But let me explain. You see, in Mongolia they found some fossils many, many years ago, and they thought they were T-Rex fossils, but then they were reassigned to a new genus called Tarbosaurus. So T-Rex did not live in Mongolia. Those were Tarbosaurus. It's just that they thought Tarbosaurus was an Asian species of T-Rex, but it's a different animal. So that explains that. So remember, T-Rex only lived in North America. The fossils from Mongolia are actually Tarbosaurus, not T-Rex. Now, moving on to our sauropod buddy, Apatosaurus. <clears throat> Apatosaurus, or Brontosaurus, means deceptive lizard. Wait, wait, no, no, okay. Okay, this whole Apatosaurus and Brontosaurus are the same thing... thingy. Well, it's pretty outdated right now. In the past, they thought that Apatosaurus and Brontosaurus were the same animal. So for many years it was like that, but a few years ago, uh, they decided that Brontosaurus actually had some differences from Apatosaurus, so they revived it. Now, Apatosaurus and Brontosaurus are two different dinosaurs once again. So this whole, they're the same thing, is outdated. But this is very excusable, because this was made in 2004, so I'm gonna let that slide. It was a harmless giant moving slowly on four legs. It was one of the largest land animals that ever existed. Is Argentinosaurus a joke to you? <laughs> Measuring 70 to 90 feet long, 15 feet tall at the hips, and weighing 33 to 38 tons. Holding its head at about 12 feet off the ground, it was a natural herbivore plant eater. It lived during the Jurassic period, 157 million to 144 million years ago. Fossils found in Colorado, Oklahoma, Utah, and Wyoming. I'm not sure, I mean, do any... Is the Morrison Formation in any of those places? Because uh, Apatosaurus fossils are known from the Morrison Formation, which is a late Jurassic uh, formation. Ah, forget it, I don't care. Also from the late Jurassic is Stegosaurus, meaning covered lizard. It had bony plates embedded in its back and it measured 26 to 30 feet long, 9 feet tall, and weighed 2 tons. It was an herbivore living during the late Jurassic, 156 million to 140 million years ago. Stegosaurus fossils have been found in Utah, Wyoming, Colorado, southern India, China, and southern Africa. What?! Okay, I'm pretty sure Stegosaurus was only found in the US. <coughs> or maybe also Portugal. Did it live in Portugal? Uh, I, I forgot. Or maybe I'm confused, I don't know. Ugh. But come on, I have never heard of Stegosaurus fossils being found in India, China, and southern Africa. Okay, there were many different kinds of Stegosaurs and they lived in many different parts of the world, but that doesn't mean Stegosaurus itself lived in lots of different parts of the world. I'm sure that, that when they were talking about a Stegosaur fossil from China, they actually meant Tujangosaurus, which is pictured here. Huayangosaurus, which is pictured here, is also from China. And I know of a Stegosaur that lives in Africa, it was called Kentrosaurus, but Stegosaurus itself 
Uh, I'm not sure if it lived in all those places. They probably got it confused with those other types of stegosaurs. Remember, there's a difference between a stegosaur and stegosaurus. Stegosaurus was a stegosaur. Uh, it's confusing. Last and least is Dimetrodon, who should really not be here. This is not a dinosaur, I repeat. It did not live during the time of the dinosaurs, so why is it on a dinosaur-based food, Matt? Instead, they could have used my favorite dinosaur, Pachycephalosaurus or something. Or maybe Ankylosaurus. Or Parasaurolophus. Or maybe Allosaurus. Or Baryonyx. Or Velociraptor. Anything but Dimetrodon. <sighs> but whatever. Dimetrodon, meaning two measures tooth, was a carnivore with a large sail-like flap of skin along its back, and it lived during the Permian period, 280 million years ago, which was way, 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 way before the dinosaurs even existed. It walked on four legs, and it had a large head and mouth with large, powerful jaws. With two types of teeth, it had both sharp canines and shearing teeth. It was 11.5 feet long and weighed about 550 pounds. Dimetrodon fossils have been found in Texas, Oklahoma, Nova Scotia, and Canada. I'm not going to question any of that because I don't care about this. So, about the facts. They're mostly accurate, but, uh, like I said, uh, Ramphorhynchus and Pterodactylus did not live during the Cretaceous, so that's wrong. Tarbosaurus was actually the Mongolian Tyrannosaur and not T-Rex itself, who was only found in North America. And uh, the whole uh, Brontosaurus is the same thing as a Patosaurus. Well, again, I'll let it slide because this is old, but uh, if this were made nowadays, they wouldn't say this. So anyway, down here it says, What is a dinosaur? Dinosaur means fearfully great lizard. Huh. I thought it meant terrible lizard, but whatever, same thing. They were given its name by Sir Richard Owen in 1842. Derived from the Greek language, dinos means fearfully great or terrible and soros means lizard. Dinosaurs are also defined as any herbivorous or carnivorous reptiles of the Mesozoic era. What? No, 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 this is wrong. A dinosaur can't be any herbivorous or carnivorous reptile of the Mesozoic era, because remember, there were also pterosaurs and marine reptiles and, and crocodiles and lizards. Not any herbivorous or carnivorous reptile of the Mesozoic was a dinosaur. Ugh. Whatever. What is a paleontologist? It's a person who studies fossils and forms of life existing in former geologic periods. Wow. Eh, not gonna lie, she looks kinda cute. Ah, who am I kidding? She's adorable! Hmm. She looks like a Phyllis. Yeah, I'm gonna name you Phyllis. You, but why are you wearing a tie? I hate ties! Okay, Phyllis, uh, sorry I yelled at you, but uh, I just don't like ties. They're very uncomfortable. Uh, I remember during my graduations, I was forced to wear a tie. Those days were horrible. Ugh. What's the point of ties? They're so pointless. But, but fine. If you like ties, you can wear a tie, Phyllis. Don't worry. You keep going, girl. No one knows what color dinosaurs were. Skin colors have organic pigments and they are not preserved in fossils. <sighs> yeah, this is pretty outdated. They have found out what colors some dinosaurs were, like Microraptor. Microraptor was an iridescent black. And uh, Anchiornis was another bird-like dinosaur that also showed it was black with, with uh, browns and uh, all those colors. And, and Cetacosaurus, which was a primitive ceratopsian, they found out that uh, it was countershaded, like it was darker uh, on the top and lighter on the bottom. And it also had a blackish head. Uh, I, I don't know, but, but yeah. We know the colors of some dinosaurs, but not all of them, because... Uh, those fossils actually had preserved melanosomes, or, 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 I don't know how they did it, but they did it. No one knows why dinosaurs are extinct. The most accepted theory is that an asteroid hit the Earth about 65 million years ago. What do you mean no one knows why they're extinct? Uh, uh, there was an asteroid! What about the huge crater left in the Yucatan Peninsula? Or, or, or was it the Gulf of Mexico? Uh, no, no, wait, wait uh, whatever. There was an asteroid. What do you mean no one knows that, uh, how they got extinct? <sighs> no one knows how many species there were. It's estimated that new species of dinos are discovered every seven weeks. Uh, okay. Uh, pretty sure this is all outdated. Okay, it is true that we don't know how many dinosaurs there were. Because while we have found lots of fossils, remember that fossilization is actually a very rare process. 
Sure, we found lots of fossils, but many more fossils never made it because they were destroyed or eaten, whatever. Dino facts. There are over 500 kinds of dinosaurs that have been scientifically named. Maybe, the, okay, I'll let this slide because at that time there were like over 500. I'm sure over the years they've discovered more. The largest dinosaurs were sauropods, correct? The smallest yet discovered was a microraptor. Okay, Microraptor is one of the smallest dinosaurs ever, and maybe it still is, but uh, I think they found a few that were a bit smaller, like Epidexipteryx or Yi uh, uh, Okay, I'm uh, okay. They were all like more or less the same size, or, or maybe some were slightly smaller. Oh, whatever. Microraptor is one of the tiniest dinosaurs. <laughs> Roughly 65% of dinos were plant eaters and 35% were meat eaters. True. That's how it is in modern days too. There's more herbivores than carnivores in the ecosystems. T-Rex had over 60 teeth and some were up to 9 inches long. The last thing is geological time divisions. This is so boring. Like, we all know, yeah. Uh, the Paleozoic, the Mesozoic, the Cenozoic. Uh, yeah. So that's the back of the mat. It has a bunch of facts of varying accuracy. Some things are true, some things are outdated, and some things are just totally wrong even for this time. Like, come on, seriously, they should have named this pterosaur Rampharynchus instead of Pterodactyl, because it is a Rampharynchus, and they should have said that it's from the Jurassic, not the Cretaceous. <sighs> At least Phyllis is super cute. So anyway, YouTube, that was my review of this uh, unnamed food mat that has dinosaurs and stuff on it. And uh, I've, I've had this mat for years now. Uh, like I said, I was a kid when I bought it or asked them to buy it for me, <laughs> whatever. But uh, anyway, so yeah, the, that was my review of this thing. And yeah, it looks nice, but it gets a lot of things wrong. Seriously, that is not a Triceratops! So anyway, thanks for watching this video guys, and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and leave comments, uh, do all those things if you want to. And thanks for watching this video, uh, it was a lot longer than I wanted it to be, but I had fun making it. So yeah, this video was made by me, Sintron Productions, and bye bye. <laughs>